nominees for Best Original Score for a Motion Picture are Born on the Fourth of July, composer John Williams. Directors to the, of the Hollywood Foreign Press Association to the member of the entertainment world for outstanding lifetime achievement. To present this year's Cecil B. DeMille Award, we proudly welcome a past recipient of this prestigious honor. There's only one level higher than a superstar, and that is Mr. Gregory Peck. Some time ago, we went to Rome one summer and made a picture about a royal princess who was out on the town incognito. She met and palled around with an American reporter. He found out who she was, but she didn't know that he knew. They had a lot of fun together. They fell in love, and in the end, each made a big sacrifice. They sacrificed their love for her sense of duty and loyalty to her country, he sacrificed a $5,000 newspaper scoop with pictures. Rather than embarrass her. May I have some? No. Now look. This is very unusual. I've never been alone with a man before. Even with my dress on. With my dress off, it's most unusual. <laughs> I don't seem to mind. Do you? I think I'll go out for a cup of coffee. <laughs> what happened next? It was the birth of a movie phenomenon and the overnight stardom of Audrey Hepburn. It may not have seemed overnight to Audrey. She was fresh from a Broadway triumph in Gigi, but she was unknown to the vast movie-going public. I can't think of another actress who's had a more immediate worldwide impact than Audrey. Oh, yes. Her performance won her that year's Academy Award and a Golden Globe Award. Over the next few years, the critics raved, all of the best directors pounced, and all of Hollywood's leading men began to queue up to make a movie with Audrey. Sabrina, with Bogart and Bill Holden. Funny Face, with Fred Astaire. Love in the Afternoon, with Gary Cooper. And The Nun Story, were all triumphs for Audrey, now a star of the first magnitude. One of the great highlights in the scintillating career was her performance as free-spirited, happy-go-lucky, holly-go-lightly, opposite George Peppard. I love you. You belong to me. No. People don't belong to people. Of course they do. I'm not going to let anyone put me in a cage. I don't want to put you in a cage. I want to love you. It's the same thing. No, it's not. Holly? I'm not Holly. I'm not Lula May either. I don't know who I am. I'm like Cat here. We're a couple of no-name slobs. We belong to nobody and nobody belongs to us. We don't even belong to each other. Stop the cab. What do you think? This ought to be the right kind of place for a tough guy like you. Garbage cans, rats galore. Slam! I said take off! Beat it! Let's go. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. George Kapar. Thank you. I've had some great good fortune several times in my career. One of those times was when the Paramount wanted me to do Breakfast at Tiffany's. It was brilliantly directed by Blake Edwards, beautifully photographed by Franz Planer, hauntingly scored by Henry Mancini, and I played opposite 
one of the screen's most luminous and beautiful stars, Miss Audrey Hepburn. You're looking great, kid. One of Audrey's most memorable roles was in the biggest film to come along in years, Lerner and Lowe's musical masterpiece, My Fair Lady. What you got, you better get what you can appreciate. Oh, I can't talk to you. You always turn everything against me. I'm always in the wrong. But don't be too sure that you have me under your feet to be trampled on and talked down. I'll marry Freddy, I will, as soon as I'm able to support him. Freddy? That poor devil who couldn't get a job as an errand boy, even if he had the guts to try for it. Woman, don't you understand? I've made you a consort for a king. Freddy loves me. That makes him king enough for me. I don't want him to work. He wasn't brought up to it as I was. I'll go and be a teacher. What do you teach in heaven's name? What you taught me, I'll teach phonetics. Ha, ha, ha. In 1967, Audrey gained her fifth Oscar nomination for a sensitive portrayal of a blind girl in the exciting chiller, Wait Until Dark. Her co-stars were Richard Crenna and Alan Arkin, who played rather disreputable characters. What are you going to do now, Mike? Disappear like magic. Good, strong lady, Susie Hendricks. World's champion blind lady. Oh, yeah. You're all of that. And Susie. Yes, ma'am. I want you to know it. What is it? Gentlemen, Mr. Richard Crenock. Audrey, 1967, what a rare opportunity for an actor. I had the opportunity of not only working with you, but of being able to see your, your grace, your style, and your wonderful sense of humor. You saw the intensity of her performance, and yet Audrey laughed a lot, if you remember. There was one day that uh, Terrence Young, our director, was going to lock us in our trailers because we just couldn't stop giggling. But Audrey, uh, uh, thanks to her, we, we shot the film on, uh, on European hours. We would come into the studio at 11 o'clock in the morning for makeup. You gotta love that. And then we never took lunch and then we went home at 7 o'clock in the afternoon. And Audrey gave every member of the crew a teacup because she wanted high tea every afternoon. And on the cup she painted each person's name. Well, that became quite a ritual. And all of the actors would try to outdo each other and put on a bigger and better tea. Well, we had, I mean, it got out of hand. We really, we had, we had a string or quartet. We had a piano player. And it got to the point where you just walk past the table, you gain 10 pounds, except Audrey. <laughs> and uh, she didn't want me to miss my turn. And Mike Tallman got killed in the film, as you saw. And Audrey didn't want me to miss my turn, so she insisted that I come in for the next seven days. And I had to lie on the floor in the dark with a rubber knife in my back. <laughs> well, even in the dark, lying on the floor with a rubber knife in his back, there isn't an actor in this room who wouldn't be proud and privileged to share the screen with Miss Audrey Hepburn. After Wait Until Dark, Audrey went into a kind of semi-retirement to spend more time with her family and devote her efforts to helping the children of the world as an ambassador for UNICEF. Last year, with the summer free, director Steven Spielberg and Wiegelder back to motion pictures, 
to play the role of an angel in his new movie, Always. Give it back. That's how the whole thing works. That's how the whole thing works, huh? So now I'm supposed to give inspiration to some flyer. Yes, but you're not going back as a flying instructor. That's only part of it. Well, how is this supposed to work if I'm, um... When you get the hang of it, they hear you inside their own minds. As if it were their thoughts. Clever? <clears throat> Elegant, graceful, radiant, incandescent. When it comes to describing you, Audrey, there just aren't enough adjectives. For over three decades, moviegoers have left the theaters haunted by your looks and enchanted by your performances. You're not only one of the screen's great actresses, you're a gift to us all. And this is our little thank you note. On behalf of the Board of Directors of the Hollywood Foreign Press Association, gives me real pleasure to present the Cecil B. DeMille Award to you, Miss Audrey Hepburn. This lovely globe means a great deal to me. The press has been very good to me. And years ago, <clears throat> gave me a great start. But today, I've learned to appreciate, respect, and value the media more than ever by constantly making us aware of the indescribable suffering in this world they have created a global compassion which to so many has become a lifeline and has in fact saved millions of lives. I've been given a career which has brought me nothing but fun and friends and happiness and enabled me to work with some of the greatest talents this industry has ever known. And for that, I get an award. I owe so much to so many. And I know we do mention too many names in thank you speeches, so I'll only mention a few. William Wyler, Billy Wilder, King Vito, Stanley Doan and Blake Edwards, Richard Quine, Peter Bogdanovich, Terence Young, George Cuker, Fred Zinnemann and Steven Spielberg, Gregory Peck, Humphrey Bogart, William Holden, Henry Fonda, George Papard, Bert Lancaster, Richard Craner, Alan Ark and Shirley MacLaine, James Garner, Maurice Chevalier, Peter Finch, Lillian Gish, Robert Wagner, Cary Grant, Gary Cooper, Tony Perkins, Eddie Albert, Sean Connery, Peter O'Toole, Richard Dreyfuss, Rex Harrison and Fred Astaire. <laughs> and of 
course, my dear friend and agent for 35 years, Court Frings. To, to all of them and all of you, thank you with all my heart. Thank you. Coming up next. Faye Dunaway, Tom Selleck, Kim Novak, and the award for Best Motion Picture, Musical or Comedy, when the 47th Annual Golden Globe Awards continue. Hello. Hello. You may be wondering what this parrot is for. Well, as you know, Ed is always on the lookout for new marketing techniques. So to introduce our exciting new Bartles and James Black Cherry Wine Cooler, Ed has been teaching the parrot to say, was left over from last